How much should you spend acquiring one new customer? That's a pretty big question. Let's break it down. Good Marketing Minute. So if you watched the last video on customer acquisition costs, which you can find right here, you know that it's not really whether you have acquisition costs, it's whether you can measure it. A couple different ways of measuring it. Go check that out first if you have questions on measuring your acquisition costs. Let's talk about what should an acquisition cost be? How do you know what a good acquisition cost is? I throw out examples of $10 to $12 of customer acquisition costs. Is that true for everyone? Is that kind of the benchmark that it should be? Well, obviously not. It's gonna matter how much the product or service that you're selling costs a customer, how much margin you have in there, and how much repeat business or future business you might get out of that transaction. There's a whole litany of things that go into figuring out what is a reasonable acquisition cost for you specifically based on the product or service that you sell. And here's what that's often measured through. It's called your LTV or your CLV, your lifetime value or your customer lifetime value. So essentially what this is trying to measure is when you start interacting with a new customer, what can you reasonably assume that relationship will look like? Another way of looking at that or asking that is how much value does the average customer bring before they move on to another business or to a competitor or anything else? So let's look at a few hypothetical examples and then one real life example that will blow you away. So for the first example, let's say that you sell water heaters. Now I don't know what the margin is on a water heater, but let's say that 80% of what you sell the water heater for is just cost of goods sold. So you're making 20% on it. And then you have some sort of service fee for the labor to install it, maybe $100 an hour, roughly um, one to two hours to install. So when you transact business as someone who only sells and installs water heaters, the lifetime value that you get out of a customer is likely heavily influenced by that one transaction. Maybe there's some maintenance cost throughout the life of it that you may come here and there and have to maintain it, but water heaters, they don't need a lot of maintenance on them. Uh, you're probably not going to sell a second water heater to the same customer within a 10 year span. Something goes wrong, that's probably gonna cover it a warranty. So your LTV is heavily influenced on that one transaction plus the service cost for installing it. Let's say for the sake of simple math that you sell someone a water heater and you install it and it comes to a nice round $1,200, right? A thousand for the water heater and two hours to install it at $100 an hour. Uh, you made $200 from the cost of the water heater. Um, the other 80% was the cost of the heater for you to buy it. So to resell it was $200 and then $200 for the actual service. So you netted $400 in that transaction. Now, if you didn't know exactly how much you were netting, say you had more of a complicated product where the cost of goods sold and time and distribution and transaction at all sort of added up and gets spread out amongst multiple customers, so you're not really sure how to apply it here, how to apply it there, you could take a general average and say, okay, well, if the customer lifetime value for this is uh, $1,200, and I know that my margin is roughly 20%, um, we'll just group it all together and we won't pretend, we'll pretend that the labor is not separate. That would be roughly $240. So something you know you would not want to do is spend more than $240 acquiring a new customer. Now it's probably slightly higher than that because that's being really conservative with what your margin is, but that's a good rule of thumb for you to say, I wouldn't want to spend more than the minimum I know I'm going to get out of this person net profit at the end of this transaction, which might be the only time I see them. That's a very clear cut, clean, round, easy numbers to think about how to position an LTV and how much to spend for a customer acquisition cost. All right, next I'll give you a hypothetical of how I would conservatively look at something like a coffee shop for determining an LTV. And then we'll actually take a look at what Starbucks positions their LTV at and how comfortable they are with acquisition costs. So if I was running a coffee shop or a restaurant or someone asked me to look at their coffee shop at the restaurant and figure out what is an LTV for the customers we have, there's two things I would do. One, 
most businesses now have some sort of payment processor that they have to use. So whether you use Stripe or whether you use Square, inside of that you have a database of real customers, real information, you know how to group them, how many transactions fit with one customer. This is a great sampling to begin to figure out what the LTV is for some of these customers. So what I would do is I would take five, maybe 10, maybe even 15 individual customers, identify them by name or by card number, and I would look to see over a period of time, let's say four months, how many, time this, how many times this person transacted business again and again, and how much they spent in total over four months. I would do that 10, 15 times, and you would get kind of a good smattering of here are 15 real customers chosen at random. Here's what these 15 customers did over four months. Then what you could do is take that same period of time, four months, Take your total revenue, everything that you made in four months, and divide that by the number of customers you had over four months. This will give you a rougher average. It will sand down the edges, right? There's some people who came in, they just got water. There's other people who came in and they got $200 worth of food. Uh, neither one of those are good representations of what the average customer does, but they all sort of balance to their own. You'll get some sort of average in the middle of this is roughly how much a customer spent in this four months. You can then take that four months, you can times that by three to give you a representation of what the year could look like, knowing that's gonna fluctuate up or down. From there, it can get as complicated as you want. You can do cohort analysis based on the types of users and groups that they're in. Uh, you can factor in your gross margin and how much you're actually netting on all those transactions. Uh, you can even figure out your churn rate and how many you know repeat business you have and when people tend to fall off and use that as a predictive model to get a more accurate representation. All of that is more complicated than you need to just begin. To just begin, you just need a good idea of how much could I reasonably spend. So if you had $8,000 that came in in revenue over four months, in that same four month period, you had 250 customers that came in, that would give you a rough beginning picture of your LTV at about $32 a customer within that window. So you could take that, times it by three to give you the rest of the year. So over 12 months, that roughly comes to about $96 that a customer may spend repeating business with you. Now, is a customer only going to stay your customer for one year? Probably not. But when you want to be conservative with what should you spend in your customer acquisition costs because you want to recoup that quickly, a year is a reasonable amount of time to expect that you should want to recoup that, especially for a small business. Now, let's take an example like Starbucks, who's a coffee shop, but also a huge brand with very sophisticated tracking and analytics. There was a real study done to determine the LTV of the average Starbucks customer and then determine what could the customer acquisition cost that Starbucks could spend to get a new customer. And it's probably gonna surprise you. Starbucks is a brand that has changed how people interact with coffee, but it's still not for everyone, right? There's a specific customer that Starbucks is going after. And because of that, their LTV is quite a bit higher and what they're willing to spend to acquire a new customer is a lot higher because they're tracking over a long period of time. So they found that in a week, the average Starbucks customer spends about $5.90, nearly $6. And they usually do that four to four and a half times per week. So the average customer value per week is 24 to $25 per customer. And what they're able to find through all their sophisticated tracking and data analysis is that the average Starbucks customer stays with the brand for 20 years with a retention rate of 75% and a profit margin per customer of 21.3%. So over the course of 20 years, the average Starbucks customer spends 25 grand and about five to five and a half grand of that goes directly into Starbucks pocket over 20 years. That's their gross margin, about $5,300 roughly out of that 25 that a customer will spend over 20 years. And there are a few other ways you can calculate LTV. So they took that 25 grand that they estimated would come from an average customer in a year 
and they measured it two other ways that we won't get into that are much more complicated, but they're more conservative, and they actually got an LTV of about 14 grand of a customer journey that they could have over roughly 20 years. So on the high end, 25 grand, they decided to pick 14 grand, about $14,007 roughly a customer would spend over 20 years on average. So with that in mind, as large as Starbucks is, they are perfectly comfortable spending anything less than $14,000 per customer to get you in the door because they know that they have a high likelihood of getting that back. Now, obviously the math doesn't work if Starbucks has to acquire every one of their customers at a maximum of 14 grand. They're not pocketing all of that money that they're gonna get over 20 years. They wanna acquire customers with as little acquisition costs as possible. But with all that data in mind, they know how high they're comfortable going to acquire a percentage of their customers. And they won't go higher than that, and they'll wanna live a lot lower than that so that they can actually make a profit on the customers that come in, right? That's the goal. You don't just wanna acquire them and, and break even. You wanna acquire them as low cost as possible and make a profit. That's the importance of understanding how to measure your lifetime value, how to really know your customer base, how to know how much they buy, how frequently they buy, and usually how long they buy before they stop buying, move on to something else, substitute your product, or just walk away because they get bored. Because now you can make more informed decisions that raise your comfort level of spending a decent amount of money to acquire new customers, knowing that you don't have to get all of that money back in one or two or three transactions. Conservatively, you can look at it over a year. If you wanna be as aggressive as Starbucks, you can look at it over 20 years and get that money back. Hope this was helpful. If not helpful, I hope it was at least just interesting to understand how a huge brand like Starbucks could spend so much money acquiring customers for just a $5 cup of coffee. Thanks for watching.